Hello there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today, we wrap up Unit 4 of AP Human Geography. Now, this might be the last topic review video of the unit, but remember, there is still the Unit 4 summary video, which covers everything you need to know from Unit 4. Now, throughout this unit, we have been talking about different states and nations, and in this video, we are going to look at different centrifugal and centripetal forces and how they impact society. When talking about centrifugal forces, we are looking at forces that divide people, a state or a group. And when talking about centripetal forces, we are looking at forces that unite people, a state, or a group. To better understand these two concepts, let's take some time and look at different examples of each of them. To start, let's focus on centrifugal forces. The first one we can observe would be uneven economic and social development, which is when a state sees more economic growth in certain parts of a state over others. Oftentimes, this can lead to certain parts of a state to lack different goods, services, or jobs, while other parts of the state will see a large variety of different goods, services, and jobs. This can cause frustration among citizens of the state and lead to divisions within the state. Next is large differences in different cultural traits of citizens, such as languages or religions. Significant cultural differences between people often acts as a centrifugal force as they create division and push people apart. If differences are too significant, it may even lead to citizens to develop negative stereotypes of other groups of people and lead to discrimination. Another centrifugal force would be corruption within a state. States that have corrupt governments, businesses, and other institutions often alienate their citizens and create division within a state. All of these different centrifugal forces could lead a state to become a failed state, which is a state that no longer has a functioning government, which means the state cannot perform its basic duties and loses its authority over the land. This can happen when the citizens of a state no longer view the government as legitimate and the state no longer functions properly. An example of a failed state could be Syria, which in 2011 became involved in a civil war, which is currently ongoing. Syria is no longer able to provide the basic services for citizens, such as infrastructure, running water, food, education, and other essential services, thus making it a failed state. Centrifugal forces may also lead to a stateless nation and ethnic nationalist movement. Remember, a stateless nation is a nation that has a history of self-determination, but does not have a recognized state. Often Oftentimes, stateless nations create pressure on the state to separate since the nation is seeking to have its own state. Ethnic national movements, on the other hand, are when a specific cultural group wants to separate from the state or wants control over themselves based on a specific ethnicity or nationality. For example, the Catalonians wanting their own state based on their cultural identity. Now, while centrifugal forces are dividing people and forcing people apart, we can also see states impacted by centripetal forces, which are pulling people together and uniting them. States that have a strong sense of patriotism, a variety of economic and social opportunities for all citizens, lack corruption and discrimination, have a shared history, language, and religion, and have a strong national government often experience more centripetal forces. States that have more centripetal forces often see more economic development, more stability in society, and a more peaceful coexistence between different cultural groups within the state's border, which can sometimes lead to syncretism, a concept we last talked about in Unit 3. Oddly enough, we can also see ethno-nationalism be a centripetal force as well for some states. For example, nation states such as Japan have their state revolve around their nationality. All right, and there you have it. Another topic review video is done. Now, remember, you're not done with Unit 4 just yet. You'll want to check out my Unit 4 summary video, which will highlight and go over all the major concepts of Unit 4. Plus, you should check out my ultimate review packet for more help with AP Human Geography. In the packet, you will find practice review questions, quizzes, study guides, answer keys, and much more. All of which will help you get an A in your class and a 5 on the national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.